Yo, what's going on guys? Real Touch GML here back with another game maker tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at variable definitions and macros. It's a new update with Game Maker Studio 2. So let's get right into the code. All right guys, so here I am in Game Maker Studio 2 and I've set up a simple object, a simple sprite. And let's go ahead and go to the events here and we're going to go to the create event and we're going to set up a simple variable. So this is going to be, I don't know, move speed equals 10. So we all know how to do this. We're creating a simple variable, an integer or a real value uh, uh, variable that we can call upon within the entire object. And this works great, I love it. Uh, but what you can do is use variable definitions now. And variable definitions, just with me using it, I haven't used it a ton, uh, but I use it in a little simple project that I did a couple months ago. And it made things a lot easier. Uh, it just created everything Everything was more organized with it, and uh, you can see why here. So if we put in that move speed, and we can put the default to 10, and it's going to be a real uh, number here, and here it gives you uh, some stuff, the value uh, of a real number, what does it say? And it says decimal places. All right, so an integer would just be um, just integer value, whole numbers, and a string would be a string, boolean is true or false. Uh, expression, I've never really used expression, so I don't, uh, maybe that's like calling a script or something like that. Uh, resource, so we can bind a resource to this variable, just like you can in here. So you can say, you know, object, let's say object equals object zero, right? So now you can call object and it'll equal object zero. So it's got all of the same functions. I think it just makes it a lot easier for beginners to understand. So we can also do, uh, a list of a list of things here, so an array and a color value. Now the color value is really cool because it allows you to set up menus and you can uh, change the color schemes on it pretty easily. So if we set up a color here, we can select, maybe we'll do like a blue and I'll just call it maybe custom color. And if, let's actually make this a custom color. So let's make it like a, oh, that looks nice there. So there we go. So these variable definitions are literally just create event variables. It just makes it a lot more organized. And also what we can do on integer values, if you hit this um, little uh, gear thing, we can use a range on it. So now we don't have to clamp variables in the step event. Now what we can do is just set a range and this variable will never go past that certain point. This I found very, very useful. Uh, so if we wanted to create something like, let's say HP, and we set it to 100, and yeah, we'll make it an integer. We can add this range from zero to 100, and now that integer will never go below zero and never go above 100. And so you can do this in many different things, uh, maybe an ammo, maybe a clip size, something like that. Uh, really, really useful to just set up real quick and you don't have to code anything. Awesome feature. So these variables, just like in the create event, are local to this object. So you can't use these variables in different objects. So that's where macros come into play. So if we create another object, and maybe we'll name this OBJ controller, and set up in the create event, what we can do is set up a macro. So we can call a hashtag macro, and we'll say maybe move speed, and we can equal it to 10. So now this macro uh, move speed is a global variable now and it's a constant. So this variable, once it's set, can never be changed. This is useful for things just like a move speed, uh, maybe things like the ammo size in your gun or something like that. We're actually gonna be getting into a full zombie game series and we're gonna be using this a lot. So it's really interesting uh, or really useful to understand before we hop into that, right? Um, so we can call move speed here. So if we you know, call our sprite, and we can set H speed to equal move speed. And you can see it color codes it in red. That's because it's a macro. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these objects into the game. And if we run it, as you can see, our box is now moving to the right that easy. All right, and then we can even set up a custom color for it. So maybe we can go into the draw event here. We can draw self and then maybe draw text. Uh, a 10, 10, uh, you know, player in game. And we'll set up the color. And we can just call custom color. And then at the end, we're gonna wanna set the color back to C white. And 
And so now we have this player in game on the top left here and it's with our custom color that we use. So now what we can do, especially for colors, this is amazing, is we can just look into this and change it and see exactly what we want with it. Just do like a pink or something like that. And it just automatically gets changed. So you don't need to be playing around with these different values anymore. Just creates it for you. So just a super quick tutorial on variable definitions. I highly recommend that you at least play around with it and see how you like it. And then also macros as well. So like I said, we're gonna be creating a zombie game series here soon. We're gonna be creating a zombie game from scratch. We're gonna be putting in all of the juicy effects that I always do. It's gonna be a great series and I can't wait to see you there. So go ahead and leave a like, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.